excuse me, has uh, liberated the entire country of Iraq. So there is fighting yet to come, and I can guarantee you that in whatever it is, about an hour and 45 minutes, when the Secretary of Defense appears in the briefing room here, he will say that, that mm. tough fighting remains. There is a lot of work still to do. And it Karen. continues as we speak, David. Stay right there. We want to go back to Byron Pitts, who is not more than a mile, the less than two miles away from there at the Ministry of Oil. How are things right there, Byron? Well, Harry, as I found him in the wind that I am, uh, we had to run, I'd say about 75 yards full tilt. Uh, Marines had determined uh, where the Iraqi fire was coming from. They ran up on Marines and they opened up on them. Right now, uh, we're on the side of the Ministry of Oil, butting back down on the ground, standing or laying behind. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. The circle with seven Marines. At one point, uh, fire was so loud with AK-47 rounds coming in and the M-16 is firing out. But I, I couldn't hear myself breathe. Uh, if you can hear the yelling in the background, I'm going to pause for a moment so you can listen as the Marines zero in on where they think. The fire is coming from. Uh, it's a white building. I'd say it's about 400 yards away. Uh, Marines are eyeballing it. That boom you heard, uh, that's a RPG going on. Let's, I'll let you listen to the Marines here for a moment. Uh, their M16's up. Pointed at this white building. Uh, we'll listen in for a second and they talk on the radio to the other Marines in this platoon. Listen in. Do you think it's possibly a kilo company firing in this direction over? Okay, you can hear that. That's incoming fire. A flare just went up. That's an indication that the person has spotted where this fire is coming from and assigned some Marines here where they may aim. This is the most intense fire that we've heard during this battle. Mark, get down, please, go. This is my colleague, Mark Kulaganga, who's up taking pictures. Uh, as this fight goes on, uh, it's just about sunset here. That pilot explosion, what do we think that was, sir? Those Marines firing back. Right. And we're at the, the good sign. The Marines have spotted that target and are firing at it. And it It's important, I think, to point out the Marines have been criticized, and rightly so, in the past of, of instances of, of firing on civilians. There was a moment here about 20 minutes ago when there was an indication where the fire was coming from, real bullets that could do real harm. Before the Marines opened fire, they wanted to make sure it was Iraqis firing at them. They determined that it was a family, a man and woman and a child. And they made the decision that wasn't the target. They held fire until they could determine where the fire was coming from and they could see the person during the fire. It was a moment, I think, worth pointing out that in, in the midst of this confusion and, and the anxiety here, that uh, these Marines have been professional, uh, calm, and they made, uh, in that instance, uh, the right choice. A call came in a while ago for Cobra air support. Well, we've not seen that yet. At this point, primarily, it's Marines, boots on the ground. The average age of 
the guys I'm with is 19 years old. But I'm the corporal in charge of the Marines I'm with. He's 22 years old. I asked him, how could a young person handle so much responsibility? He said, sir, I try and keep it simple. It's my job to get these 19-year-old boys back home. And that's what I'm going to do. Uh, right now, we're in a, the Marines are in an offensive position. Uh, we have decent cover. Uh, we're huddled either, uh, in some cases, on their knees, uh, some on their backside, some stomach down with their weapons pointing in the direction of the incoming fire. Harry? Byron Pitts is live in Baghdad. He's right next to the Ministry of Oil, which is a, is a modern, somewhat imposing-looking uh, structure, not more than, it's probably a, a mile and a half or so from the pictures that we've been looking at all morning of, uh, of this square in the middle of downtown Baghdad where the statue of Saddam Hussein has just come down. But uh, while the Marines here are relaxed and in a, in a position of repose and, and chatting with some of the locals here in downtown Baghdad, a mile and a half or so away, Byron and the unities with with the Marines have been coming under uh, somewhat constant uh, small arms fire, RPGs, over the last, uh, I'm going to say, 40 minutes or so. Byron, you've had a chance to, uh, to catch your breath. Uh, assess the situation right now where you are. Well, Reed, uh, I think we're about to move again. Uh, they're going to change their defensive position. Harry, you're going to hang with me. Yeah, uh, we're going right to. Right now, we're moving. You move. You move. I imagine a Marine crouched down, uh, not running, but, but moving briskly to a new position. Right now I can see a Marine walking towards us what what looks like, in layman's terms, a bazooka. Uh, the armored vehicles, Marine Corps Army vehicles, have been repositioned in offensive position. Uh, hey, one of the difficulties, because we're at the ministry, uh, the XO was ordering his men in clear and calm language. They are not to open fire unless they are certain they're firing on uh, Iraqi uh, paramilitary or military position. Uh, they are concerned not only with their own safety, mm. but the safety of civilians. Byron, Byron, hang loose a second. Byron, we'll get back to you in just a moment. We just want to let our viewers know that they are looking at a live picture of what appears to be civilians running through the streets of downtown central Baghdad with what was left of the statue of Saddam Hussein, which was toppled. It was his head. The uh, statue was toppled at 10.49 Eastern Time, 7.49 on the West Coast. Um, that was about 22 minutes ago or so. They were running through the streets dragging the head of Saddam Hussein's statue that was standing in the center of that square. Uh, Byron, if you can still hear me, uh, this is Julie Chen in New York. You had mentioned that uh, where you are, about one mile outside of the pictures we're looking at right now of downtown Baghdad, you were coming under fire with U.S. Marines from three different locations. One of the locations you described as a white house. Has that White House, been, ha, has any of that area been secured? We heard a lot of gunfire being ex exchanged at your location. Not yet. Uh, we've not heard any fire for the past minute or so. Uh, the EXO, the executive officer of this platoon, has made the decision that uh, he will not allow his Marines to fire on the house 
until they're certain that they see uh, weapons, they see who's firing at them. Uh, so at this moment, uh, we're in a defensive position uh, as we're crouched down. He's repositioning his Marines uh, to get in more of a, a sniper position to, uh, to take a view of who's firing at them. Okay, what's that foyer for, sir? Uh, let somebody else know that it's uh, uh, help me know where we're at. We're not shooting It's my, it's my other, another Jason unit know where we're at. Okay. I'm sure you heard that. Uh, the Marine just uh, sent out a flare. Uh, so that we won't come under fire from other Marines in the vicinity. It's a locator. Uh, so they're fellow Marines, we know. Uh, listen for a second, there's another flare about to go off. No, don't worry about it. Okay, that was, okay, brother, my colleague Mark Lugango is in a different position from me, uh, give me the thumbs up, he's okay, uh, that was a, a green flare that the, uh, Marines set up from the position where I'm standing, so the other Marines around us will know that there's friendly in the vicinity and, and not to fire here. All right. Byron, I want you to catch your breath, lay low, stay safe, get squared away there. We will come back and check with you again in, 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 a, in a little while. Are you all right, pal? All right, my friend. All right. All right, brother. I'll talk to you. All right, Byron Pitts. Wanna, Harry, we, I have a question for you because mm -hmm. you, you, you've been here. Um, the area where Byron is and the area where John Roberts is, John Roberts is in the northeastern portions of the city. How far apart are they? And is this an indication that it's relatively quiet in the city center and yet there are these pockets of resistance in the outlying areas? What does that tell you? Yeah, because our picture is right literally in the, in the heart of uh, downtown Baghdad. And... Uh, what we heard three shots two three shots in the last two and a half hours uh the marines came rolling in there two and a half hours ago they had their binoculars out they had their guns at the ready they were looking around they were looking for for snipers maybe an hour into that there was a little bit of small arms fire but from the from what we can see it's very very peaceful for the time being right there at at this roundabout uh, uh, where, where the statue of Saddam Hussein was, was toppled. Not so far away, I really, I'm thinking it's a mile and a half or so, is this Ministry of Oil. It's a very modern, kind of imposing building. You know that's where the money is. You mm -hmm. see this building, you say, the, you, know, you know that's where the money is. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's, it's not that far away from there. So you can imagine throughout this city, there are places where it's calm. There are places where uh, there, there are, uh, there are uh, uh, forces under attack. Um, John looks to be out in almost a suburban area of northeast Baghdad. But earlier in the day, in that eastern part, in what we call, you know, Saddam City, mm -hmm. where all the Shiites live, it was crazy there with the looting, the looting and celebrations right. and everything else. This, well, this uh, is a lot to get buttoned up by nightfall. I mean, because <laughs> there, there's a, there's yeah, obviously... And it ain't, and it, it right. ain't gonna get buttoned up, I'll tell you that. Uh, the crowd has continued to build here, um, and the, the statues come down. Uh, William Cohen, uh, a senator, former senator from Maine and uh, former defense secretary, is uh, with us on the line from Washington, D.C., and we want to check in with him right now. Uh, good, uh, good of you to join us, sir, and uh, your impressions of what you've been uh, watching thus far this morning. Well, it's uh, quite a moment uh, in terms of uh, history. Uh, the symbolism of uh, Saddam's statue uh, being toppled in the heart of uh, Baghdad, I think, is, uh, cannot be underestimated. Three weeks ago, uh, they tried a decapitation strike at uh, Saddam and his uh, regime. It may or may not have been successful. This is a different form of decapitation taking place, but one that has great uh, symbolic value, not only to the Iraqi people, but I think uh, throughout okay. the Arab uh, community. We have the picture up again now of, uh, of this... Uh, uh, 
of statue coming down, but uh, it's 21 days, and Mr. Secretary. Uh, you know, there were certainly ups and downs along the way, but uh, it, it's a, it, it is nothing less than impressive to, uh, to see uh, the U.S. military uh, in the heart of Baghdad, and at least at some points, uh, very little action going on. I think you'd have to say uh, extraordinary. Uh, this is uh, undou undoubtedly uh, unprecedented in terms of the speed with which uh, the forces have been able to move uh, into the heart of Baghdad to have uh, reduced uh, but not, of course, eliminated the kind of resistance we're still seeing in uh, northern Iraq and perhaps in parts of southern Iraq. But I think uh, this has to be uh, one of the most extraordinary military campaigns ever. Uh, waged. And so we, we want to uh, continue to praise our men and women who are wearing the uniform, uh, also indicate to the American people they should be very proud of the, the bravery, the courage, the training, the leadership of those forces, uh, the sacrifice they make, that of their families. Uh, and then also a word of caution. Uh, there are old axioms about making haste slowly. Uh, at the same time we make haste slowly, we also have to keep the pressure on and keep the momentum uh, going. Uh, there are some indication that the troops, of course, uh, may be weary and tired and need of uh, a rest, but they are professionals and they understand uh, more than anyone else the need to keep moving and not allow Saddam and, and what remains of his regime to uh, gain any kind of uh, relief uh, in, in any kind of a systematic uh, pause. So uh, I think all of us should take a great, uh, great uh, pride in what we've been able to accomplish and now I think also what we have to do is to make sure that we send the right signal to the uh, Arab community throughout the world, that we uh, exercise uh, this uh, power with uh, great humility, that we try to quickly um, put in place uh, institutions that will allow the Iraqi people to govern themselves uh, and to then uh, turn it over very, very quickly to the Iraqi people. I think that is the best uh, symbol that we can uh, serve for the rest of the, uh, the world that uh, still uh, uh, has to live under the existence of, uh, of tyrants. Uh, Mr. Secretary, this is Hannah Storm. You talk about the importance of how this will be perceived in the future by the Arab world, and there are a couple of things that need to happen. Obviously, an enormous humanitarian effort, right. as well as the location of these weapons of mass destruction. Can, so can you speak to the challenges of what coalition yes. forces are going to face here in the days, months, maybe even years to come? Well, the first challenge, of course, is to maintain security. Uh, uh, we do not have complete control at this point, and that's going to be critical to ensuring that that food and uh, water supply and other humanitarian relief can proceed uh, without being impeded by those who would uh, adopt guerrilla tactics or terrorist activities in order to uh, try and uh, destroy that ability. So security first, and that uh, is yet to be completed. But once that is completed, uh, to certainly get the distribution of the humanitarian assistance assistance out as quickly as possible. And then, of course, uh, the, uh, the third thing would be to uh, help put in place those institutions that will allow the Iraqi people to engage in self-government. What has taken place today, I think, is the exposure of the lie of Saddam's form of democracy. Just a few months ago, we saw that he had 100 percent turnout and 100 percent uh, voting uh, margin. And, and, uh, and that, of course, was ridiculed by uh, virtually all free people, but this really does expose the lie. People are going to the streets uh, in uh, a jubilant mood. But what we have to take care of is this jubilation doesn't turn into recrimination at some point in the future if, in fact, we don't deliver on what we have promised. And what we have promised is to have a free uh, Iraq that is free of Saddam, certainly open to uh, democratic uh, institutions, and also free, as you mentioned, uh, of chemical, biological, radiological, and possibly even nuclear weapons. So that will come, that will take a bit longer because the country the size of uh, the state of California has many, many uh, hiding places and bunkers that are deeply uh, buried. Uh, it may take uh, months, if not longer, but I am satisfied it, it will be achieved. And uh, once again, the lie that Saddam claimed he had no weapons of mass destruction will be exposed uh, to all of the, the cynics and the doubters. Uh, Mr. Secretary, we've been talking all morning about the powerful symbolism of this historic moment of the statue being brought down, the coalition forces working in conjunction with the Iraqi citizens. How important are these types of pictures in terms of worldwide perception of this conflict? Uh, I think uh, the worldwide perception of the United States, uh, we, we really need to uh, convey a more positive image of the United States. I think there is uh, 
uh, genuine concern that uh, perhaps the United States is uh, acting uh, in a way that uh, uh, is inconsistent uh, with, uh, quote, the international uh, community's um, uh, rules. Uh, I believe that the United States has acted consistent with uh, what was called for, namely the disarmament of Saddam Hussein, the place that was made some 12 years or more ago. Uh, and so I think now, however, uh, it is important for us uh, to communicate to the world that uh, we are not there to, uh, to occupy Iraqi territory. We are, we are there to see to it that those uh, instruments of terror have been removed, that the instruments of self-governance are put in place. And, and frankly, this is not a question of nation building. They have a nation, a, a very uh, proud nation with educated, a highly educated population, uh, very talented. Uh, they, have a, uh, they have a country, a nation. What they need now are institutions that are truly free and open and democratic. And that will take uh, some time. It will take some security uh, contribution by the United States, the British, our allied friends. But ultimately, uh, I think that the message that will go out to the world is that uh, we need to, all of us, cooperate in bringing an end to the uh, dissemination and indeed the harboring of weapons of mass destruction so that the world will be free of this kind of scourge. We've seen something that has been spreading throughout the world uh, right now called SARS. Uh, presumably, that's of a natural origin, uh, the, uh, the pneumonia uh, uh, virus that has been spreading. But consider, for example, if that were produced in a laboratory by a terrorist-supporting nation. Uh, you can see how quickly something like that can spread globally by virtue of the fact that technology has miniaturized uh, this world in which we live. So all of us have an interest now in seeing to it that weapons of mass destruction uh, are not uh, built, they are not disseminated, uh, and that uh, governments are committed to their removal in a peaceful fashion, if at all possible. William Cohn, uh, former Secretary of Defense uh, down in Washington with us today. We thank you so much for your thoughts and your time this morning. It's good to see you again. Thank you. You are looking at a live picture of uh, downtown Baghdad. It is uh, just getting to be uh, dusk over there now. Hey, we're coming up on, what, just about so a little more than two and a half hours that, uh, since uh, U.S. forces rolled into uh, downtown Baghdad, uh, at least in this area. Uh, we've heard three shots in the last two and a half hours. A mile and a half away from the, the picture you're looking at uh, right now over at the uh, oil ministry, uh, our Byron Pitts uh, with the Marines under uh, some significant fire. Uh, it sounds like the Marines were uh, starting to get a leg up on it, but uh, this is not a safety zone by any stretch of the imagination. We saw uh, some jubilant Iraqis uh, as the statue of Saddam Hussein uh, went to the ground and uh, they were jumping up and down and what was left, the, the carcass of the, the statue, if you will. But uh, less than a celebration, this is uh, in many ways a very sobering moment here because as this critical point, as Baghdad is being taken over by U.S. and for, uh, coalition forces, these folks in this town, five million people, making a decision about where their loyalties now lie. And throughout these neighborhoods, heavily, heavily armed civilians, Saddam loyalists, as we heard uh, the Marine colonel earlier today say, Mujahideen from their Palestinians, Lebanese, Syrians, who they've, uh, they've disarmed in the last 24 to 48 hours. Uh, while this, this picture is significant, it is still a volatile, volatile situation, and uh, this is by no means a city that is under U.S. or coalition control. We want to uh, talk now for a few minutes with uh, Zainab Sawaj, who is uh, an Iraqi who is uh, part of the uprising and, uh, and, and resistance uh, in, 19, uh, in 1991 uh, during the Gulf War. She was on the streets with, uh, with her fellow Iraqis in, in moments of uh, pure jubilation when uh, many of the millions of Iraqis uh, at that time thought that uh, the country was uh, going to go back into the people's hands and away from uh, Saddam Hussein. And she joins us now from, from Boston. Zainab, it is great to see you. Can you share with us uh, some of, some of your you, thoughts Harry. as you have uh, seen these pictures and, and witnessed what we've watched here over the last two and a half hours or so? Well, it's, uh, it's amazing. It's reminded me of 12 years ago when uh, Iraqis uh, 
uh, rise up against Saddam Hussein's uh, government. And uh, actually, uh, it reminds me of like we're picking up what we left 12 years ago. Uh, it's a very exciting moment to see uh, uh, the, the statue falling and the Iraqis are uh, to express their true feelings about what, uh, what's going on. And uh, they've been oppressed uh, by this regime for more than 34 years. So it's a, it's a historical moment in Iraq uh, in Iraq history, and um, um, Iraqi people they're gonna remember it, and remember and they gonna it's gonna be their day of uh, liberation. The work is not finished yet, but uh, I think this is a great sign of uh, freedom, and you see the people as the uh, they feel that the fear and the Iraqi government control is fading. Uh, they are expressing their uh, true feelings and uh, their happiness uh, towards this liberation. When the revolution, as it were, or would have been revolution, uh, happened and you were on the streets uh, those years ago, uh, it was with the promise that the United States would help, and of course uh, that help never really came. I know you were at the White House uh, sitting right next to President George Bush uh, just a couple of days ago. Uh, right. This is this is a very different situation this time around, isn't it? It is different situation, Harry. It's uh, you can see uh, that the American uh, forces or the coalition in, in general are committed to free Iraq from Saddam Hussein's uh, regime and his uh, control over this uh, people. And uh, it's uh, when we I met with the president uh, last Friday. He said, I'm determined to free Iraq uh, from Saddam Hussein's regime and free it from uh, the weapons of mass destruction and uh, also to help Iraqi establish democracy inside Iraq. Zainab, uh, this is Julie Chen sitting alongside Harry Smith. Before you go, I have a quick question. Earlier when um, we saw civilians and U.S. troops trying to tear down the uh, statue of Saddam Hussein, at one point um, someone took an Iraqi flag from the 80s, uh, pre the Saddam Hussein era. Uh, we don't know where that flag came from. I'm wondering if, if that having that flag alone in this present day in Baghdad is, is some sort of violation. Um, they, they put up this flag in, in defiance, obvious defiance of Saddam sure. Hussein's regime. Sure, it's, it's, uh, it's definitely, you know, people, uh, they still hold on to, to the things that they have before Saddam Hussein change things and take control, and because hoping that one day uh, Iraq will be free uh, and liberated, and uh, so they can have the real uh, things or the real uh, flag that they have before Saddam Hussein came to power. And uh, they can express their true feeling, their happiness and excitement about having a free, democratic Iraq, hopefully soon. Mm. How are you doing emotionally, Zaina? Uh, it's, it's been uh, mixed feelings. I'm, uh, as I saw the, um, the statue um, falling down, I, I, tears came to my eyes. I remember 12 years ago when we had the same thing and we, we saw Iraq. Uh, free for a few days, and um, it's reminded me of these days. Zainab al Sawaj, good to see you. Take care, and we'll talk Thank to you, you again soon, I'm sure. As uh, we continue to watch these pictures uh, from downtown Baghdad, we have heard from John Roberts, we've heard from Byron Pitts coming under seriously heavy uh, enemy fire. The situation certainly not at all resolved by any stretch of the imagination and as we get closer and closer to dusk it becomes even more volatile if you will let's go to uh, white house correspondent bill plant for reaction from washington bill well the reaction here was a reaction of caution while u.s tanks were rolling into the center of baghdad this morning our time the president was in the situation room meeting with the national security council for a meeting that lasted a good deal longer than usual and the White House spokesman wasn't even willing to say that the regime was collapsing. There was a note of great caution here. However, down in New Orleans, the situation was a little bit different. The vice president is there speaking to the American Society of Newspaper Editors. He's always been more ready to speak out on Iraq. This morning, he told the newspaper editors that there's no way of knowing how long the war in Iraq will last. In downtown Baghdad this morning, we're seeing evidence of the collapse of any central regime authority. 
The streets are full of people celebrating. While pockets of regime security forces may remain, they appear to be far less effective at putting up any resistance. Now, while the White House was a gloat-free zone this morning, you can't quite say the same of the Vice President's appearance in New Orleans. He made a couple of references which were